the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grafa fangneve davo gudachi, grace and peace be with you. And peace be with you, Lord Good morning to you all. Welcome to our Eucharist here today. Although it is the 6th of January, of course, we kept the Feast of the Epiphany on Sunday. So today, although it is still Twelfth Night, so to speak, is uh, in terms of our celebration this morning, an, an ordinary day. And we offer this Eucharist with special intention today for all the young people in our parish. And we remember especially those perhaps feeling anxious or worried given the current uncertainty over schooling and education at this time. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love, shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the birth of your Son, you have poured on us the new light of your incarnate word and shown us the fullness of your love. Help us to walk in his light and dwell in his love, that we may know the fullness of his joy, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. God destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of God's will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of God, who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, 
were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. response to the psalm is sing to the Lord with thanksgiving sing to the Lord with thanksgiving worship the Lord O Jerusalem praise your God O Zion for he has strengthened the bars of your gates he has blessed your children within you he has established peace on your borders he satisfies you with the finest wheat he sends out his command to the earth and his word runs very swiftly. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hair like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. He declares his word to Jacob his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I've long had a fascination with words, where words come from and what words mean. And I've always enjoyed working with words. At school, I was one of those pupils who was hopeless with numbers. Maths, science, all those sorts of things made no sense. But give me an essay to write, I loved it. I loved playing with words, assembling words into some kind of meaning to give across an argument or a message that you're trying to give. And... Words are not only abstract things, sort of, that you can look up in a dictionary, 
words seems to me also are very personal to us because we, perhaps without thinking about it really consciously, go through the process all the time, don't we, of selecting in our brain the words that we want to use in order to hopefully get across the message that we want to impart. It's a process I'm doing at the moment. I'll leave it up to you to decide how coherent what is actually coming out of my mouth. But words are very personal. They impart what we want to say, what is on our mind, what is in our heart, and we select them with care in order to try and get across our message. Words, of course, can also be very powerful. Think of some of the great writers in history, the writers of books of the Bible, writers like Shakespeare or great orators like Churchill, whose words, and again, that's, they've gone through that same process we go through of selecting the words mentally and then issuing them forth either in speech or in writing, yet those words take on a power that has influenced people uh, down the ages. And our own words can have an impact on other people. The words that we say can encourage, can build people up, or they can discourage or knock people down. They can inspire people to do things or they can discourage people um, from doing things as well. And words also can bring about a different state of affairs, if you think about it. A bride and groom standing uh, before this altar, saying just those two words, I will, brings about that state of holy matrimony. Um, we might say to another person, I love you. That changes things in our world, in our relationships. I promise to do such and such. You get the idea. Words can have a power which is much greater perhaps than we realise when we just speak them out of our mouths or write them down on a piece of paper. And once we think about words in that way, it seems to me, it helps us to understand a bit more that great prologue of John's Gospel that we heard. And John chooses this, this word, word, with a capital W, in order to try and describe what God is doing in Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And just like our words are personal to us, they're part of us, they express what we are trying to do, so this Word, capital W, is part of God part of God's essence and is expressing what God is wanting to do. But also, just as when our words leave our mouth or go onto a page, they can have a power and an influence beyond what we could imagine. What John is saying is that this word doesn't just stay within God, it comes out from God into the world and changes the world and has a power beyond which we perhaps couldn't ever imagined before. So what is the effect of the word coming into the world, the world, word becoming flesh, as John puts it? He writes this, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. This is the effect of God's word coming forth from him. It gives us the power to become children of God. And this is something that is available, John says, to everybody. These children of God were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh. In other words, not simply because of their racial or ethnic origin, as was previously the case with the people of Israel, but of God. We are all children of God. This is something that is available to everybody. This is the power of God's word becoming flesh in Jesus Christ. And we see something similar being expressed, I think, by St. Paul in that wonderful passage today from the letter to the Ephesians. 
He talks about God choosing us in Christ before the foundation of the world. God destined us for adoption as his children. There's that word again, to become children of God through Jesus Christ. We become part of God's family through what God has done in Jesus. And again, the inclusive nature of God's project, if you want to call it that, is mentioned by Paul. He talks about we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, no doubt referring to his own people, the Jews. Then he goes on to talk about, in him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, referring to Gentiles to whom he's writing. You also were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit because of what God has done in Jesus. And then talks about our inheritance as God's own people. Our, not just them and us anymore, but our inheritance. It is something that is for the whole world. And so in this Christmas season, this epiphany season, we continue to give thanks for God's gift to us of his word, his son, Jesus Christ. It is a word coming from God that has power, that changes the world. And it's summed up perhaps best by a line right at the end of the gospel passage today. It is God, the only son, who is close to the father's heart, who has made him known. Jesus makes God known to us. We can know God in an intimate and personal way. And in so knowing him ourselves, can then make him known to others. Amen. Gwedeun, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you promise to hear us when we pray in faith. We give you thanks for your word, which comes from you, which takes flesh in the form of Jesus, which has power to transform our world and to transform us. In the worldwide church today, we are asked to pray for the Diocese of Abuja in the Anglican Church of Nigeria. And in our own diocese, we pray for June, our bishop, the clergy and people of this diocese. And especially today, we are asked to pray for the Department of World Mission, our twin diocese of Uppsala in Sweden, and the World Partnership Officer, Canon Martin Davis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for peace and justice among all the nations. We continue to pray for all those suffering as a result of the conflict in Syria, for all who have become refugees and all living in refugee camps. We pray for all those seeking to build peace and reconciliation in that land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own parish, and today especially for all the young people of our parish, and also for all who live in Ebenezer Street, Mill Street, Stag Street, and Morgan's Court. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill at this time, in body, mind or spirit. We pray especially for Rhiannon Winlord and her family. We remember too those who have gone before us, who have influenced and enriched our lives through their words and their deeds. Among the recently departed, we pray especially for Mike Deby and Colin Stone, and for those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time, especially Betty Welford 
and Joyce Thomas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Now that we have been justified through faith, we are at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, be pleased to accept the sacrifice of our food and be pleased to our hearts. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And 
Now we give you thanks because by the power of the Holy Spirit, he took our nature upon him and was born of the Virgin Mary, that being himself without sin, he might make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise. And grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine, may be for us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. break this bread, to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share 
in one breath. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death, your life for the world, grant that these gifts of your body and blood may cleanse me from my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful always to your teaching. Let me never be far to from you. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. He is everlasting. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. 
Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.